Good afternoon. My name is Jared Campbell, and I'm the McCurtain County Forge educator uh, there in Ottawa, Oklahoma. Uh, today, I want to tell you something about that was a, a goal of mine. It was a dream of mine uh, from being a small child growing up in a small rural community in southeast Oklahoma. Uh, and that dream was to be a volunteer firefighter. Always looked up to the firemen. Always thought it was neat to drive the big red trucks with the sirens and shoot water on the fire. Uh, and I tell you what, when I was 16 years old, that dream come true. I was able to become a junior firefighter, uh, and then at 18 years old, I was able to graduate up to what they call a senior firefighter right here in my little community of Hayworth, Oklahoma. So as you can see right here on our engine, it's the Hayworth Fire Department is what we're called. We have three stations. We have one main and two substations. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of our equipment that we use. Uh, and I wanna introduce you to some of our guys that's on the department with us as well. Uh, I've been on this department, like I said, since I was 16 years old and uh, it's a joy every time to go out and, and help the community and give back to the community that's given so much to me uh, what i grew up in but at this time i want to introduce a good friend of mine and i want to show you a little bit about the equipment that we use as well uh, his name is miles emerson miles to come in he, miles is also our training officer and as you see right there hi miles how are you yeah, pretty good. good you'll see some of the equipment it's also called your ppe your personal protective equipment now each volunteer firefighter is outfitted with this equipment. This is what we call our bunker gear. So we go into house fires, uh, car fires. You know, you see these guys wearing this if it's summertime, if it's wintertime. You see Miles has the coats, the pants, the steel toe boots, the gloves, the helmets, the face shield, and then we call the Nomex there and he'll showcase that here in just a minute what we do. But you see these guys, we deck out every time we go to a fire. Uh, this gear right here is going to cost you, what, right up to $2,500, give or take a little sure, bit yeah. or so. So each firefighter takes this equipment home and holds it with them. So anytime we get a call to volunteer on our fire radios for our dispatchers, we get our gear and we go to the fire and we go to the scene. But this time, Miles is going to get a tank right quick. And come on up here and let me show you. When we decide to go inside a house fire, uh, this is what our air apparatus is. It's called an SCBA, a self-contained breathing apparatus. Now, when we go to the schools and we go and we do field trips and we bring kids up here to the fire station and we show them about the fire department and about everything, we show them about all this stuff and I will show you about this tank and I'll talk to you a little bit more about it in just a second. But anyways, this tank right here uh, is again what we taught. Each tank holds about right at 20 minutes of air. Now that being said, every person is different. Some can go right at that 20 minutes. Some might take 15, 12 minutes. Every way is kind of different, but that's where you need to stay in shape so you don't get too much air whenever you're out on these fires and fighting these fires. So Miles is gonna demonstrate how to put it on. And what you do is, of course, you have to turn the bottle on first and you hear that sound and that tells us that the bottle is now ready. It's just like a backpack, guys. He'll swing it around and you'll see Miles will suit up. So anytime you see a big house fire and if you're driving by and you see the fire truck pull up there and you see these guys doing this right here, that means they're suiting up, they're putting on their PPE, they're making sure everything's right before they go into a burning house to make sure no one's in there to rescue somebody or whatever we have to do to make sure to get that fire put out as soon as possible. Now you see here, this is our shield. This is our right here. And Miles have put it on. This is what we have to see. This is what we use to keep that heat off of our face. And every person is different. And what that is, is we make sure, you have to make sure this thing fits tight and you have to make sure this thing fits very secure because if you don't, you will hear the air. It'll be coming out from the side of, those, uh, your, of your mask there. It's where that air will come from. If you're losing air, that means you're losing time, is what we like to say. You see here, Miles, he's putting it on. He's sucking it up, making sure everything's just tight. You see how he does that? He wants to make sure he does it with his hand to make sure the suction is just right. He'll put his Nomex on. That protects the back of your neck. That protects your ears. And you say, go inside that burning house. Okay. So red means up as always when we're taught and training. Come up here and listen to this once you hear this. Kind of sounds like Darth Vader, right? And it does. But hang on just a second. Miles is 
going to put his helmet on. He is now ready to go inside a burning house. He'll make sure everything's strapped just right. And again, we talk about if you're a kid and you're scared and you see these guys coming in, you see these guys coming in and you hear the breathing, you hear that air, it, it sounds very scary. The fire is hot, there's smoke in the room. We're down on our hands and knees all the time having to crawl. As you all been taught, you know, smoke rises, so you have to stay low. Your heat's gonna go up as well, so you have to stay low. And that's where you see these guys, they're coming in and they're gonna rescue you. So it sounds, it sounds hard, it sounds tough, but at the same time, this is what we're trained. But I also want you to come up here as well, and I want you to listen to Miles. Because it's kind of hard to hear, but this is what he's gonna say, listen. Firefighter, call out. Firefighter, call out. Now what he said was, firefighter, call out. That means we want you to call out help. We want you to say anything to get our attention if we can't see you, so we can go in there and get you out safely from that house or that burning building and then we can get you out and make sure that you're okay. So again, that's what the full suit looks like right there on that. See the tank? It shows right there how much. And something else, let me show you, it's pretty neat on these new bottles that we have, is the firefighter can grab that right there, and he can look at it, and it tells them how many minutes is left, okay? Or something else that's pretty neat, you, you can't see it, but right in here, there's lights. Those lights mean green means good, and red means you better get out. So what that means is, you can also watch that as well. When your lights go down, that also means your air, the, the time of your air is leaving out as fast. And when you get down to so many minutes, this thing will start vibrating, it'll start beeping at you and telling you, you need to get out and go get more air, okay? So, anyway, Miles, that's what it looks like when we're going inside a burning building, okay? And then we talked about also as well, car wrecks, and things like that. So let's talk about that now. Miles, I know it's hot, we'll let you get this gear off. I wanna introduce you to the next firefighter. Uh, it's a good friend of mine. We grew up together as well. Uh, he went to school here at Hayworth. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, the equipment that we use for car wrecks, for car crashes, and things like that. And then we'll go from there. So Nick, come on in Nick. And I wanna show you, Nick has on a little bit set of different gear. And this is what we call our wildland gear right here, okay? So, and this is, a, as you can tell, a lot thinner, not as bulky as what Miles just had on. But a lot of times for wildland fires, when it's 100 degrees outside and humidity is 100%, this is what we wear. So, as this gear here, we also use it for wrecks as well because it's easier to maneuver if we have to. So, come go with me. We'll show you the truck a little bit and a few things. So, you look right up here and Nick can come up here as well and see that this is what we call the jaws of life. You can get up there and see. So again, you have your cutters, you have your spreaders, and this is kind of like what we call a ram, but it also is like a jack, as you say. So if we need to pick up something right quick, we can use it. This is the power unit that runs it. So anytime we have a what they call a car wreck or an entrapment or someone's entrapped, Nick's gonna put his gear on and they can have this gear on or what Miles had on. We're gonna grab the jaws of life. We're pulling it off that truck and we're coming to you and we're gonna get you out. The main thing is stay calm, talk to us, because we're gonna get you out as soon as possible. All right? So if you wanna follow us around, we're gonna show you a little bit more and it's something else that with this gear that Nick has on, what else he does. But you see here as well, we have more bottles. When we have a big house fire, we can have all these bottles and come on around here. And we'll show you some other stuff you have our medical equipment as well so again if we have medical calls we have numerous medical calls as we have many emrs and many emts and paramedics as well on our fire department they will come and we'll grab this gear as well and then we will go and help ems assist in any way as possible when we're not on a fire call or on a wreck scene this here's our generator uh, we have more tools and infrared camera to look inside to see if heat's in a building or fires in a wall uh, chainsaw as well uh, if you look back and just see the general here of our truck here, as you can see, um, this guy here is one of our biggest and our baddest. Uh, as you see, holds 2,000 gallons of water. Uh, so that's what we call our engine one. So that's our biggest engine that we have here. And you can look around and see it, it and how big it is. 
and we take that thing all the time for mutual aid. Uh, we take it to every house fire uh, and numerous, numerous calls this truck right here goes on. Let me show you one of our grass trucks uh, right quick as you see. Uh, this is again one of our smaller one ton pickups. Uh, and this truck here is just a regular single cab truck. And then you'll look, you see here on the back is we have the unit, the skin unit is what we call it, to fight brush fires. So this is what we have when you have grass fires, brush fires. This is the truck you're gonna see us bringing out there. And then something that's pretty neat, um, not real low to the department, is our Ranger 1. This is a Polaris Ranger uh, right here. It is an 800 series, it's six by six. And this also has a skid unit in the back. So we use it also on grass fires, uh, forestry fires, wildland fires, you name it. We use that unit right there because it's a lot lighter than a pickup and we can go out there and put out fire um, with that little unit right there, come back to the truck and get more water if we need it, you know, anytime. So this thing's really been an asset to us as well. So anyways, this is just some of our equipment. Uh, we wanted to show you about some of our things that we use here. Want to introduce you again to some of our guys, uh, Nick and Miles, again, the two of our best firefighters. Uh, we have right at 30 guys here on the Hayworth Volunteer Fire Department and we're always uh, looking for new volunteers. So if you want to volunteer, not here at Hayworth, but anywhere across the state of Oklahoma as a volunteer firefighter, I'll tell you what, go down to your community, go down and check them out or look it up on the World Wide Web as well. Uh, again, it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure, and we want you all to stay safe with what's going on in this world right now with COVID-19. Uh, please stay six foot apart. Please wash your hands uh, every time that you think about it because again, we want this to all go away as soon as possible so we can get back to our everyday life. Uh, thank you and God bless.